Okay, so I'm Des Prouse. I uh, came to Goonhilly in 1971 as a technician uh, involved in the development of satellite communication systems and uh, I climbed the tree from there onwards and by the time I retired in 2007 I was in charge of technology and service development. I'm Ian Jones, I'm the CEO here at uh, Goonhilly and uh, my first involvement here was uh, back in the 1980s when I worked as a contractor uh, building some of the equipment that was uh, installed here. Goonhilly was first built as a satellite communications site in 1961-62. It was chosen because the British Post Office had agreed with the newly formed NASA to take part in satellite communications experiments. It had to be a site in the west of England somewhere. It had to be hopefully having view of the western horizon. So as the low earth orbit satellite came over the horizon, they could get maximum use of satellite at that time, whilst America were looking at it from their side. And it had to be a very stable um, ground, and this is serpentine based, so it's a bit like granite, so it's very stable. It had to be a long way from man-made interference and, and including railways. So um, it was the perfect place to choose. There were three large antennas built by 1972 and they were carrying television pictures and also probably more importantly telephone uh, across the Atlantic. It used to be used for things like well, you know, royal weddings and things like this and a, a lot of people of course talk about um, 1985, the Live Aid, when uh, there were I don't know, 13 different satellites linking together. And one of the things that doesn't get advertised too much, but uh, is quite significant, and we didn't know it at the time, but uh, we, we were carrying the very first generation digital signal through, uh, the, the, through satellite. I can remember doing heavy from my earliest memories. I was into space and uh, the Apollo program. After I graduated, I actually worked for British Telecom for a few years uh, down at their research labs in Marchham. Uh, so I always wanted to uh, to come down here and, and, and visit. But when I was, uh, you know, when I was within the company, uh, but it took me leaving BT and actually becoming a designer in a small uh, electronics design company. Uh, and we won a contract to actually just supply some equipment here. So I'd, I'd been running my own small company and um, just by chance I, I met you, Des, in, uh, or re-met you in, in, a, in a conference in, in London and uh, you had this interesting proposition. Yes, well, I, I, I flashed a piece of paper at you, if you remember, and it was uh, a copy of a Japanese repurposing of, of their large, one of their largest ground station dishes into radio astronomy. And, I, I, and you were flabbergasted that BT were going to knock all the dishes, most of the dishes down in Green Hill. Well, ab absolutely. And, and uh, what I, I guess you didn't know at the time is my brother was uh, a radio astronomer at, uh, at Oxford. Uh, and I took this, this bit of paper and I had a conversation with him. Um, his response was, oh, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, but, uh, you know, you'd never be able to do that. It'd be far too expensive. You phoned me up four days after I got back from the meeting in London and said, can me and my brother Mike come and visit you? Uh, I have a proposal to make. The site uh, wasn't really for sale. And of course, the, the antennas were, were due to be, um, to, to be demolished. So that was a, a bit of a fraught period of time. We leased the antennas for, for three years. And we had basically this period to start the business up from scratch. So um, day one, we were straight out there um, touting for business. And um, you know, we, we were very fortunate that we were able quickly to, to win some new business. And we called on, on friends and supporters to help us with equipment. And uh, we were able to get antennas going again. And then the next step for us was getting the finance in place so that we could buy the site. And uh, we had three years to do it, and we did it just in time. So uh, we, we were able to buy the site uh, in January 2014. 
One of the things that really appealed to me about Green Hilly was the fact that uh, there was a range of different sizes of antennas, there was all of the infrastructure here, there was a visitor center, there were data cables coming in, so there was a, you know, just lots here. Green Hilly gave us the opportunity to have a number of different businesses all um, sort of in, in one and to have a range of different services uh, from providing uh, you know, um, communications, geostationary satellites, controlling those satellites, working with low earth orbiting satellites, but really also moving to the, the bigger end of the scale uh, and doing deep space communications and, uh, and radio astronomy. So that, that was the, the real vision, was to build a business that had these different facets to it. Mm -hmm.